If you're anything like me, then you look for inspiration for Minecraft builds all around you. Well, after watching Season 4 of Stranger Things, I wanted to try and build Vecna's mansion. Some of you asked for a tutorial for that build. No worries, I'm Primal, and I've got you covered. Okay, so the blocks you're going to be using for this tutorial are light blue terracotta, smooth quartz blocks, stairs and slabs, diorite wall, polished deep slate blocks, stairs and slabs, as well as brick blocks and stairs, and glass blocks and paints. I'm going to be using slightly different blocks. I'm going to be using smooth stone, polished diorite, polished andesite. And the reason for that is because these blocks have more defined edges, which makes it easier for you guys to see. That way, if I get ahead, you can just pause the video and count them out yourself. So here we go. Okay, so the first part of this build is going to be the central tower of this house. The central tower is going to be five blocks wide by five blocks long. Don't forget to put the corners as your smooth quartz. And then it's going to be 13 blocks high. Now you only really need to do the front and the right side of this tower. The back and the other side are kind of going to be hidden by the house. So for now, just fill out these two sides that you see here. And then we're going to continue on to the next part. Okay, now what you're going to do is go two blocks up from the bottom, and you're going to cut out two blocks for your door. And then four blocks above that, you're going to cut out two more blocks for your window. The next step is to place our trim around the top. So what you're going to do is take your smooth quartz stairs and put them upside down just like this around the top part of these two walls. Now we're going to add three smooth quartz blocks on top of each corner just like this. You're going to put your deep slate, polished deep slate in between these, just solid blocks of polished deep slate. And what you want to do is fill out all four corners of this. So I know we only built two walls earlier, but you're going to want to do all four corners, five by five, just as I said earlier. Okay, now I'm just going to check the other roof here to make sure that we're doing it right. Yeah, so you're going to put another row of polished deep slate blocks on top of this, but you're going to leave the middle one on the front open for our window, just like this, and we're going to do a second row, oops, second row just like that. The next step is to put your polished deep slate stairs on top of these blocks, all the way across, and then you're going to get your diorite wall and put three blocks of that on each corner, just like this. Now once you've got all four corners of your diorite wall, you're going to take your smooth quartz stairs, you're going to place them against the side of those, and then you're going to take and break the top block of those diorite walls, just as you see here, and you're going to go all the way around to all four sides. Okay, once you're finished with that stair trim, what you're going to do is you're going to take your polished deep slate blocks and you're going to put them all around the inside and one block up from your stairs that you have underneath here. So you can see that's what I'm doing right now. I kind of have to build down to it a little ways. But yeah, you're going to put them right there along the inside. And then what you want to do is take polished deep slate stairs and put them on top. Right where these blocks are, I'm going to delete these. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put the polished deep slate stairs on top just like that. All four sides, obviously. Once we're done with that, we're going to put solid blocks on the inside to fill in the gaps. Once we got those full, we're going to take our polished deep slate slabs and we're going to put them on top just like this. And we're going to take a full block of polished deep slate and put it right in the middle, just like that. Now, we've got the central tower all finished, other than their glass pane, obviously, and our door, but we can add that later. Now we're going to get started on the left wing of the house, which is the dining room. Okay, so the dining room is going to be 8 blocks wide by 9 blocks long by 13 blocks high again, and it's going to stick out 2 blocks from our tower. So 8 across the front, 9 across the sides. So we're going to go here and we're going to stick out 2 blocks. Don't forget your corner blocks of quartz. And then it's going to be 9 blocks deep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and corner, 9, and then 8 this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and a corner. 9 back toward the front, don't forget your corner, and then 8 across, just like this. Now, of course, we're going to make this 13 blocks high, just like the tower part. So go ahead and lift all those walls up to 13 high. As I said, we're going to make all these blocks 13 high. The front, the side, the back. You only really need to do those three sides. Uh, you don't need to do the part that is up against the tower because it's going to be an interior space anyway, so you don't really have to worry about that. But yeah, the front, the sides, the back, all 13 blocks high. The front and the back are 8 wide, the, the sides are 9 wide, and then you can see there's 2 blocks left over. You can fill those in if you like. 
All right, so now we're going to add the trim around the front at the same height as we did on the tower. We're going to leave it blank across the front so that we can do this peaked roof. The same at the back. So we just wrap it around here, and then we skip a gap, and go to the corner, continue all the way down the side, and then in the back we're going to leave another gap for our peaked roof, just like this. For the peaked roof portion, we're just going to go to our corner pieces, just like this, and we're going to start stair-stepping it up on either side. Stairs on the front, stair on the back, stair on the front, stair on the back. You get the idea. And they're basically going to go up both sides and they're going to meet in the middle. Now since this part is eight blocks wide, they should meet back to back perfectly. If you get behind, don't worry about it. Just pause the video and count out the blocks. That's why I chose these blocks with defined edges. Okay, now that we got this at the top, what you're going to do is continue to fill out the inside with your uh, blue terracotta. We're just going to fill this in and then we're going to cut out our window here, which is these four blocks. Then you take your quartz stairs, you put them all around the outside of the window just like this. And on the inside you can use glass panes or glass blocks, it's up to you. It's just kind of to make it look like there's a window in there since you can't put glass inside uh, stairs. The next part we're going to add is our front window to the dining room. I'm just going to measure it out here. Okay, yeah, so you're going to go one block up from the ground and you're going to cut out four blocks by four blocks. So four blocks wide by four blocks tall. And then you're going to take your quartz blocks and you're going to put them along the outsides like this. Oops, yeah, the sides. And then on the bottom and the top you're going to use quartz stairs just like that. Upside down stairs at the top, right side up stairs on the bottom, and then put your glass panes in the middle just like this. At the same elevation as the window in your tower, you're going to cut out four blocks in the middle, and you're going to put your glass panes inside, and then you're going to put your uh, quartz blocks along the outside, but only on the sides, not at the top or the bottom like the window downstairs. Just like that. Oops. Just like that. Now we're going to go around to the sides and we're going to put at the same elevation two windows, two blocks in from the outside, just like this, and two blocks in from the other side. Be sure to put your panes in them. And then we're going to take our quartz slabs and we're going to put them over the top like awnings, just like this. Now go ahead and put those over the other windows, four in front of the second floor uh, dining room window, and another one on your tower, just like that. Now we're going to go around to the back and do the peaked roof on the back just like we did the front. Pretty much the same exact process. Right here on the edges where your corners are, you've got your trim already put on. You're going to add one on the inside. Wait, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, okay. So right on your corners, you're going to put those just like that. You don't go in. You just put them right there. That way it matches the front. Stair step in, stair step up just like we did on the front, and since it's eight blocks wide, just like the front, they should meet in the middle. Once you get to that point, you are going to fill in the inside with your light blue terracotta, and then we're going to cut out a window just like we did in the front. We're going to go ahead and put our panes behind it. Be sure to use four uh, quartz stairs just like we did in the front. The only difference between this one is we're going to put some trim along the bottom, just like this, upside down, just like that. So pretty straightforward, just like the front, except for the trim along the bottom. Make sure your stairs are all facing opposite directions, just like that. Perfect. Looks good. We've pretty much got the dining room finished. And if you haven't already, you may wish to raise some of these blocks up just to make it kind of square off, make everything even. Just like this. Then we're pretty much ready to get started on the side wing of the house. The side wing of the house is going to be nine blocks wide with one block inset diagonally and five blocks after that with another block diagonally after that. So bear with me. It sounds complicated, but we're going to be fine. Also, you're going to want to start in three blocks from the outside of the tower, just like this. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine for our corner. Wait, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, that's only eight. Hold on. Let me double check. Nine. Yeah, so I need to add one block to that. No problem. So we're going to go nine blocks, including our corners, and then one block in diagonally, and then five blocks wide after that. Just like that. And then one more block diagonally. So if you see that pattern, you're going to take those all up 13 blocks high, just like all the other ones. 
Feel free to get rid of that piece of trim there so that we can make them all even. Everything goes up to 13 blocks high. And there we go. Nice work. We're coming along very good. As you can see, we got them all up to 13 blocks high. Now we're going to go ahead and add our windows. So, two blocks in from the corner and two blocks in from the other corner, just like this. You're going to put our glass panes two blocks off the ground, same level as the door. And then up above it on the second floor, we're going to do the same thing. Two blocks in from the corner, we're going to put our awnings overhead. Two blocks in from the outside, put our glass panes in. Oops, get rid of that. There, now that looks good. Now here in the corners, we're going to put glass blocks because these are kind of diagonal windows. Diagonals can be a little tricky in Minecraft, but if you put glass blocks in here like this, it'll look better. So those are our diagonal windows, and then we can continue in with the rest of the build. Oh, and I almost forgot. We may as well add trim to the rest of the front. On this front part of the side wing, we have trim just like that around our windows. And we have some more, I believe, right here at the tower window in the middle. Yeah, just like that. All right, now we're set to go ahead and start the back of the house. From that diagonal piece there, we're going to go 10 blocks back. And then we're going to turn the corner and we're going to go 15 blocks across the back. And then we're going to go right into the side of the dining room. So if you follow this pattern here, you'll see what I'm talking about. 10 across the side, 15 across the back, and then we connect right into the back of the dining room. So here we go. Obviously, like the rest of the house, these are going to be 13 blocks tall. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is our corner. And then across the back, we're going to do 15. So 10 from the side where the diagonal one is. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, which is a corner block. And then we're just going to run this wall straight into the side of the dining room. Now, as you've probably guessed by now, all these blocks are going to go 13 tall, just like the rest of the house. Once we get all of those 13 tall, we will continue. All right, now we're going to cut out our walls here, two in from the corner. Then we're going to do a gap of two and a gap of one, just like this. Obviously, you're going to want to put your awnings over the top of them, just like that. Now, these windows back here, they don't have to be perfect. The reference photos I used to design this mansion, they didn't have photos of the side or the back of the house so all of these windows I just I just kind of ballparked where I thought they would be so it doesn't have to be exact but if you want to follow exactly that's fine just go ahead and do so as you see here then when we get to the back we're going to go in three blocks from each corner and then three blocks from each window so three blocks from the corner three blocks to the middle and then three blocks to the outside just like this and of course we're going to put our awnings now unlike the front of the house we're going to put our awnings over the first floor windows as well as the second floor. We don't need to put our uh, awnings over the first floor windows at the front of the house because that's where the porch is going to go. But since there's no porch in the back, feel free to put awnings over them just like this. Now when we get to the windows on this side, you're going to go three in from the outside and then two in. I uh, realize here, I'm going to realize here in just a second that I screwed this up. I'm supposed to have pillars along the outside. You can kind of see it over there in the other house. But as you can see here, we need to put one pillar in the corner, just like that. Remove the trim piece, take it to the top, and then you're going to take that one just like that, three blocks away from it. So if you see on my design here, it's got a quartz block in the middle. Don't worry about that. You shouldn't have that since you just continued with your light blue terracotta. So this window is going to go two from the inside of that pillar. And then there's a two block gap to the next window and then there's a three block gap to the corner so between those two pillars right there is where our back door is going to go and once we put our awnings over these windows and we put the second floor windows right above them with the awnings on top of those we're going to start building the back door here so for the back door we're going to go one block up from the ground as you can see there i, do, I went two blocks up and then i'm looking at the other house and i realized my mistake so i'm going to break the bottom block and replace the top one just like that so one block above the ground leaves us room for three stairs across the bottom just like that and then we're going to put a little peaked roof above it just to keep the rain off our heads when we go out the back door three blocks above where the stairs go we're going to put our sideways stair block just like this so we can get a nice little peak over our back door and we're going to put two smooth quartz slabs just like that 
And then above the door at the same elevation as the rest of our windows, we're gonna put another window right between these pillars, right like this, with an awning and glass panes. And then I think we have two more windows to add to the back of the dining room, and we're basically done with the back of the house. So right at the back here in the middle, we're gonna put our window, just like this, two blocks from the inside of that inside pillar, three blocks from the outside. We're gonna put an awning over it in the same spot directly above it at the same elevation as our other windows, just like that. Now, congratulations, we are basically done with the back of the house. Now we're gonna start on the wraparound porch. Okay, just looking at the other porch here, we're gonna take our smooth quartz blocks and we're gonna follow this back wall just out like this. We're gonna go three blocks past it and then we're gonna turn and we're gonna take it to the front of the dining room and we're gonna go three blocks past that one as well. Then we're just gonna fill this in just like so. Again, if you get behind, just feel free to pause the video and count them out yourself. We're gonna take this to the corner of the dining room and we're gonna fill this in and then we're gonna put stairs underneath where our door goes over here. These stairs are going to be one block up from the ground because we're going to put a porch underneath that. And I'm just going to look at the other house here real quick. We're going to build a peaked roof over this door, just similar to the one we built in the back. But this one's going to be underneath the porch. So we're going to go up three blocks here. I put four, but we're going to do three. As you can see, when I take a look at the other house, I realize that I put one too many, so I'm going to go back and make it three. And then we're going to use our stair step pattern to go up and meet in the middle. So three blocks up, stairs on the outside facing out, upside down stairs on the inside, and then when we get to the middle, we're gonna put a solid quartz block right in the middle like that. Then we're gonna take our porch out to the front just like this, and right where the stairs are, we're gonna leave one block in so that we can put another set of stairs, and this last one goes out just to here, just like that. Perfect. For the remainder of the porch, you're going to step in two blocks and come straight out from the side here, just like this, but you're going to stop two blocks shy of where the, where the rest of the porch is, and then we're going to fill that in just like that. Once so we get that filled in, we're going to measure for the rest of our pillars. Those are going to be diorite wall for you. We're going to go over here and take a look at the other house just to get the spacing right, and then we're going to come over and we're going to build these pillars just like this. So we're gonna put one in the corner and then we're gonna skip a gap and put two on either side just like that. Same thing over here. You're gonna leave a one block spacing between them. They're usually in pairs of three or two. We're not gonna put it quite at the corner here, but we're gonna have one right there and then another one right there. And then around the side, we're gonna go two blocks from the end just like the other one. Two more right there and then two here at the other side. Three actually, sorry, three there. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to make these four blocks tall. I know you're watching the video and you see that I only make them three blocks tall, but trust me, they're four blocks tall. I tried to put the porch on this and I ended up having to go back and completely destroy it because it was one block short where it needed to be until I realized that I screwed up and made my posts a little too short. So I cut that probably 20 or 30 minutes out of the video. So trust me when I tell you they're going to be four blocks tall instead of just the three blocks that you see me building here. It's going to save you a lot of time and headache. There we go. See, now I'm putting four blocks on here. I just realized I had to redo the whole thing. So, they're in all these places in the corners like this, and they're four blocks tall. And then when we get around the other side, we're going to get our quartz stairs, and we're going to start putting trim on top of them. As you can see here, we're going to put our trim at roughly the same height as the bottom slab of our peaked roof over our back door. And you're going to make sure that you have them all in the right uh, orientation like I have here. Sometimes when you're putting stair blocks in a row rapidly, some of them will go the opposite direction for some reason. But you're just going to make them all upside down just like this, all the way around the porch. And then when you get to the front door, we're going to go into the wall like this and we're going to leave a little gap because there's going to be a peaked um, area over this part of the porch. So just do exactly what I'm doing here. Make sure they're all upside down and then they wrap around here and then they turn to the right and they go out this last part of the porch and then they wrap around and then go right into the wall. So just follow what I'm doing here. Looks perfect. This is looking great. Now we're going to put our stairs just like this. We're going to do just like we did on the other peaked sections of the, of the house. And we're going to stair step them up. 
and then so they meet in the middle with a square block of quartz and then you're going to take your light blue terracotta and just fill out the inside like this with a bit of trim the light blue against the white looks really good and then you're going to take the four blocks right over the uh, dining room window and you're going to place solid blocks of quartz two slabs on the bottom two stairs on top of the solid blocks and then two slabs across the top of that just like this and then of course you're going to take your light blue terracotta and fill in the inside just like that and then it's pretty much just a straightforward job of wrapping your uh, polished deep slate stairs around just like this you're going to give it a sloping roof and it's pretty straightforward stuff just make sure that everything uh, fits together like this if you want to put the inside fill out the inside you can otherwise you can just leave it kind of hollow you know as long as the stairs are covering any gaps you want to make sure they're covering any gaps and then wrap it around the front here above this part I like to uh, kind of make it peek out like that I think it looks a little bit better and then uh, you just wrap it in and cover up any empty gaps with your stairs pretty straightforward stuff again if you get behind feel free to pause the video and uh, just count out the blocks one of the things I like to do is uh, fill in the inside here with light blue terracotta and then you just use your stair blocks just like this you just kind of follow the pattern that's already there you fill in everything behind the quartz and then you wrap this around so that it attaches to the other part of the porch again sometimes they place in the wrong direction but that's okay just take your time we add that and we are looking very good we are over halfway done with the house now so things are going well I'm gonna put the trim in before I put the second layer of shingles on so we just wrap them around like that and then you can use um, polished deep slate blocks in the middle like this to uh, finish out the inside so there's the porch finished good work moving on oh and this little part here I like to wrap around and that looks pretty good so now we're going to finish our trim around the outside of the exterior of the top part of the house we're going to take our upside down quartz stairs and we're going to just kind of wrap them around everything we built so far like this give it a little bit of a victorian style so we're going to take this all the way around the house and we're going to connect into the uh, back side of the dining room here and once we're done with that we're pretty much ready to start putting the roof on and uh, doing the final touches so now at the front of the house we're going to put two uh, stairs and then we're going to leave a gap like this we're going to put a window there are two windows up here on the uh, attic level roof section and then we're going to do three on either side in from the peaked section of the dining room and we're going to do the same thing we're going to put two panes in here just like this and then we're pretty much ready to start putting the roof tiles on so again you're going to be using the polished deep slate stairs and uh, put blocks behind those like that so we fill in any gaps I tried experimenting here with a little bit of a turned look and I didn't really like it so I, I'm just gonna keep it straight just like this the roof section is pretty straightforward uh, it doesn't have to be perfect so you know you can kind of take a few artistic liberties here but you just sort of follow the patterns we have and connect it in with everything as long as it goes in one block and up one block you just connect everything just like this it's pretty straightforward and then make sure you make the turns where needed so that you don't leave any empty holes in the roof we don't want rain coming in and uh, you know wrecking the floors that we have it's a nice old hardwood floor house so you don't want any of that moisture to wreck everything so this part we're gonna go straight across and then we are going to turn these stairs I thought about putting slabs over them but I don't think it looked right I went and looked at the other house yeah see we got stairs that turn so let me try that you can put slabs if you want to your roof after all but we're just going to turn the stairs and then we're going to put solid blocks in the middle and that's one of the attic windows done and then we're going to continue with the uh, stair blocks across the top looking very good we are almost finished with the house we're just putting the roof on it now and then uh, this part here of course you're going to have to make it turn so that it, it adds in together when you put your second layer on you're going to see here how that needs to change I'm going to have to break that block 
and bring that out a little bit. There, and you don't want to leave any gaps, so we're going to have to turn this one. Or you can put a solid block on the inside, it's your choice. Okay, excellent work. We just continue the pattern around, and that is the roof of the dining room done. So now we're going to continue these stair patterns around. We're going to put solid blocks here, just like the other window, so we don't leave any gaps. And when you get to a corner like this, you're going to turn the stairs and just kind of follow the pattern that's already there. Oops, let me get rid of that one. So we turn this, and you usually want to have about one block uh, gap between the outside and your roof. A little bit of runoff, of course, you could, I guess you could call it gutters if they have them up there. I don't know how you do a gutter in Minecraft. It might look a little bulky, but either way, as you can see, we're just following this pattern that's already here. The back of the house is probably one of the more simple areas, so you don't have to worry about that too much. As you see here, I'm going to put stairs across and uh, I notice there's like a little half block gap. So what I'm going to do is replace these stairs underneath it just with solid blocks, just to get rid of that gap. We don't want, you know, any sunlight. We don't want to be inside the house looking up and being able to see outside. That's not good. So I'll just put solid blocks here and then we'll continue our stair pattern all the way back around. When I get to this part, I like to think that all the hard work is basically done. Uh, getting the pattern laid out for the wings and the main tower and all that stuff and the porch. Those areas are really the more intricate parts of the build. So putting the roof on this is pretty straightforward. You just follow the patterns in a block, up a block, give it a traditional stair step type of roof. And then when you get over to this window here, I think I just put slabs on top of it. It was different than the other window. It wasn't quite as tall. This part of the roof is a little bit shorter. So I just put slabs on it. I thought that looked pretty good. From the ground, they have a pretty similar appearance. So you don't have to worry about it too much. And then uh, on this one block gap here, I put another slab. And then once I get this third row of stairs put on the house, I go ahead and just fill in the interior. You can use slabs or solid blocks, whatever you'd like. Uh, you can put the slabs at the top of the stairs or you can put them at the bottom. It's your choice. I put one uh, layer of slabs on it, and then I ended up putting on a second layer. So as you can see here, I'm just going to make those solid blocks because they don't quite work well with the way the pattern works. But once that's done, yeah, as you can see, I just put slabs on it, and we're basically done with the roof. When I got to this point, I thought maybe it'd look better with another layer of slabs. So I went back and put another one on. But it's up to you. It's your discretion. It's your your mansion. Build it however you want. At this point, you're, we're basically done. So we're just trying to make it look good and finish things off here. Sometimes when I build a, uh, a roof of half slabs, rain will still come in. I don't know if Minecraft considers it a full block or not. So sometimes it's safer just to put two layers of slabs or a full block on top. Oh, and of course, don't forget to put in the glass uh, blocks in these diagonal windows here. Then I'm going to put the doors on the front and the back of the house. Uh, there's no stained glass door option in Minecraft, unfortunately. So we can't make it look exactly like Stranger Things. But then we're going to come inside and I'm going to start laying out for the floors. I don't really have a full finalized interior on this build yet. So I'm just kind of putting floors where I think they should go. Uh, if you want to build an interior in your house, that's fine but I don't have one to show you. I'm just basically putting the floors. When I built the house to make it look spooky, I put some uh, walls and some floors in there, but I put some cobwebs up there just to kind of give it a, you know, kind of a, a haunted look. If you're looking through the windows and you see cobwebs, it looks really good. So I just basically put the floors in here like this. Uh, any dark wood look good. Uh, dark oak looks really good in my opinion. Also spruce wood. So I put down floors basically uh, where you think they would go uh, and then uh, I put some floors on the inside on the second floor and the third floor. Basically you just go one block below the windows and put your floors in. I didn't fill them out, I just put them along the inside of the walls so that you guys could kind of see where they went. As you can see I'm just putting them one block below the windows and then uh, I do the same thing for the dining room here. And then uh, I go up to the third floor and put them one block below the windows there. And once you do that, 
it'll give you, I think it's a five block tall first floor and a four block tall second floor and then a three and a half block, maybe two and a half block tall attic. And that way the first floor is really kind of tall. It's got five blocks is a pretty good interior space. When you walk into it, it gives you a lot of uh, height. That way you can look like it's a really kind of a spacious mansion, which I think looks really good from the first floor perspective. And then if you want to, you can put um, walls in here, kind of wherever you like. It's up to you, but uh, according to the build from the, the show, there was a wall in here that went straight and had a staircase right next to it. So I kind of wanted to recreate that a little bit. I think I ended up moving this wall over one more block. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that, move the stairs out one more block. So that way there's a little bit of space, there's a gap. And then uh, angles are kind of hard to do in Minecraft. But in the show, there was a staircase on the right in that main hallway once you came in the door. And then there was a, a um, fireplace kind of at an angle. And there was a mirror above it. And then right next to that was the infamous uh, grandfather clock that Vecna always had shown to his victims. They would see the grandfather clock in, in you know, the hallucinations or whatever. So I would put the stairs over here and then you know the clock could go like something like right there if you wanted. Uh, oops. But yeah, it's basically up to you. It's not 100% uh, finished. So I did the exterior of the house and then the interior is kind of up for grabs. But if I was gonna do interior walls, I'd probably lay them out something similar to this. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I almost forgot the chimneys. I almost forgot to put the chimneys on here. So uh, get your brick blocks and your brick stairs, and we're going to do chimneys just like this. We're going to go in uh, two blocks from the side, and we're going to make them four blocks wide, two blocks tall, and then three blocks in from that one. So there's two chimneys, both made of brick, and they're both two blocks tall, and they're four blocks squared. And then what you do is take your stairs and kind of rotate them like this, so that you get a little bit of an inset area. It kind of makes it look like a good uh, little chimney. So, almost forgot to add those. Sorry about that, but there you go. That's how those look. And now I'm gonna go back inside. If you wanted to do a dining room table, I would do one kind of like this. There's a uh, two by three pattern there that's kind of in the middle of the room. That would be a good spot for a dining room table. And then uh, if I were to put more interior walls in here, I would probably just close the space off into a series of squares and put doorways in them, something like this. Uh, make sure that I don't run the wall into the windows. But yeah, you ju I just kind of split up the space, make it look good, add windows, doors. It's a mansion, so you can make the rooms as big as you want, or if you made them small but numerous, you could have a mansion that had a lot of rooms. Maybe a, maybe a combination of big rooms and a lot of small rooms would be a good option. I kind of redid the stairs here a couple times. I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to make it look. Uh, I think I ended up putting it back and then putting a door right at the bottom of the stairs so that you could walk into that other room. But that's just an example of like an interior that I would do. Yours is completely up to you. So, But that's an idea of what I was going for. So congratulations, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back, and if you'd be so kind as to put up a sign, I worked pretty hard on this build, so if you could put up a sign that says designed by Primal Gaming, I'd appreciate it very much. And then put it on another row, put built by, and then put your name, because you deserve some credit too. This was a difficult tutorial, and if you've made it this far, then you've got your very own version of Vecna's Mansion. So give yourself a pat on the back, and uh, congratulations. This is the longest video I've ever uploaded to my channel, so it took a little bit more work and took a little bit longer than I normally take to do my videos. So if you liked it, please uh, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. Also, this uh, version is kind of the base model. If you want to make it look more haunted, then what you want to do is put signs over the windows, kind of like this. I feel like that makes it look more like it's boarded up, like it's been abandoned, you know? So I put a lot of signs over the windows and once you get kind of an interior going what you can do is put cobwebs inside along the ceilings or along the walls to kind of make it look abandoned. I always like to take uh, 
bone meal or, or grasses and kind of build them up around the outside. But you feel free to use any color sign that you want. But if you put uh, wooden signs out here like this and you just don't put any writing on them, they look really good for like boarded up windows. So that's what I'm doing now. As you can see, it kind of makes it look a little bit more abandoned. And then up here for this window, I just put on the outside of the stairs since those uh, panes are on the inside there. So I think it looks pretty good with the boarded up windows. Another thing you can do is if you can get a hold of hanging roots, I think those spawn in lush caves. I'm in a uh, creative mode, obviously, but if you can get a silk touch pick and get yourself some hanging roots, you can put them on the underside of the porch here. Oh, and it looks like I didn't even finish this out. I'm going to fill this in with uh, smooth stone. So if you have a gap there, you're going to want to put their, your light blue terracotta. But if you can get a hold of some hanging roots, you can kind of hang them from the ceiling and make it look like, you know, the place is overgrown a little bit like this. I think it looks pretty good. And then, of course, if you get vines, you can put vines along the outside of the house. Or even if you can get uh, creeping and twisted vines from the nether, that looks pretty good too. So if you wanted to build this version of Vecna's mansion like it's actually in the Upside Down, you could definitely put some vines all over it to make it look like it's been, you know, kind of absorbed by the Upside Down. But I think it looks pretty good with regular vines. If you do use the creeping and twisted vines, you'll find out that you can't really attach those to the side of structures. You have to hang them from solid blocks. As, as you see, I'm trying to put it here and it won't work but it'll hang from overhangs here, like the awnings and the porch and stuff like that. So it looks pretty good with a, with a variety of vines and hanging roots and boarded up windows. It really kind of starts to take on that spooky effect and look like a haunted house. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of my future content. Thanks for watching and be sure to look out for those Demogorgons.